I'm gonna taste a little, oh wow, that's crunchy. I don't know how well you can hear it, but it's pretty crunchy. Hey, it's Kenji Lopez Alt, and today we're gonna make my extra crispy Parmesan crusted roast potatoes. I spent some time, a few months living in Northern England, you know, where every Sunday you have the Sunday roast, which is generally sort of overcooked roast beef, Yorkshire pudding, and really crispy potatoes. You know, and the way, the way they're typically done there is you boil them first until they're kind of soft, and then you roughly toss them so that the exteriors get coated in this kind of starchy slurry of like, you know, sort of like mashed potatoes. And then when you roast them, that slurry adds a lot of surface area to them, which makes them extra crispy. So this recipe uses sort of that technique, but I kind of try and maximize the amount of extra surface area you're adding to the potatoes, uh, and you end up with this kind of crispy shell on the outside. So I have a couple pounds of russet potatoes. This also works, by the way, with uh, you know, like a Yukon Gold potato. You don't want something super creamy, like a red, like a, a waxy red potato won't work quite as well. It won't get very crispy. Uh, but anything ranging from like a Yukon Gold up into up to a russet, a starchier potato, is going to work here. I'm going to cut them into relatively big chunks. I've seen similar recipes to this done with even bigger chunks of potato. So you could take like say half of a potato if you want. Comes out really nice. It has a sort of, you know, a soft baked potato interior with a really nice crispy crust. So potato cells, you know, they, they resemble these sort of little rigid balloons. All those little balloons are held together with this carbohydrate glue called pectin. And so when you cook vegetables, a lot of the softening that occurs is the breakdown of that pectin and sort of these cells becoming unglued. The idea here is that we want the exterior of the potatoes to break down quite a bit so that the cells can then combine with the butter and Parmesan we're gonna add and make this sort of starchy slurry. Um, pectin breakdown varies by pH level. So the more alkaline the water that you're cooking, that is the higher the pH of the water, the more pectin is gonna break down. In this case, we're measuring out the water because we're adding a specific amount of baking soda and salt. That baking soda is gonna raise the pH of the liquid, and so the exterior of the potatoes are gonna cook a little bit faster and they're gonna break down faster. And that's really sort of the key to the recipe here. A lot of extra surface area, a lot of extra crunch. Now to add flavor to here, I'm gonna take a little cheesecloth pouch. I know the recipe calls for cheesecloth, but I, I don't think I, I don't remember the last time I've had cheesecloth in my kitchen at home. Um, so normally when a thing calls for cheesecloth, I just throw it all in there and then like, pick it all out at the end. It doesn't have to be black pepper, garlic, rosemary, and bay leaves. You know, you can kind of choose your own adventure. Fresh thyme would work really well. You could do shallots instead of garlic. Basically any sort of flavoring that you think you would enjoy with potatoes. I'm gonna wait for this to come to a boil. We'll reduce it to a simmer. They'll cook for about 10 minutes or so, um, and then we will be ready to move on to the next step. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna pick a little bit of this rosemary. I don't think this is even called for in the recipe, but I'm gonna pick some extra rosemary so that we can toss it with the potatoes at the very end. Okay, so what I'm looking for with these potatoes is first of all, for the exteriors, you should feel like there's almost like a kind of starchy slurry on them, but really what we're looking for is for them to be cooked through to the center. So a knife should go through. I mean, you can even take it out and cut it in half and check whether it's sort of still raw and chalky in the center. I'd say it's about another 30 seconds or so and they'll be done. You're just looking for them to be cooked through. So at this point, you have a few choices. At the very minimum, what you want to do is mix these potatoes with some kind of fat. And so in this case, I'm going to use butter, melted butter. You could also use something like duck fat or olive oil or shortening. I would avoid some, you know, like a really flavorful fat. So I would avoid something like an extra virgin olive oil or like a sesame oil. Any, any kind of sort of high temperature safe fat is going to work here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to also add some Parmesan. And the idea here is that as this Parmesan cooks, with the potatoes, it's gonna form like a frico layer, you know, a layer of like sort of fried cheese on the outside. It's kind of like the crispy edges of a quesadilla, you know? Definitely not like a necessary step, but I think a nice addition to these potatoes. So you see I'm like relatively roughly tossing these all right now. I do wanna sort of encourage that starch on the outside to kind of slough off a little bit, combine with the butter and cheese and form that sort of layer that's gonna coat the outsides. All right, I got a parchment lined baking sheet. I'm gonna dump out these potatoes. It's okay if they're touching here and there, but I want them to be in a single layer and as much as possible to sort of get some space between them so that air can circulate around in the oven and really crisp them up on all sides. They do shrink a little bit as they cook. If they're touching a little bit, that's okay. They will sort of pull away from each other as they roast. You'll notice after the initial cook, I did not add any extra salt to this. To this. Um, that's because the cheese is quite salty. If I was skipping the cheese, um, I would toss them with a little bit of salt in that bowl. And these are gonna go into a 400 degree oven with convection on. If you don't have convection, use a 425 degree oven instead. But if you do have convection, it'll get them brown a little bit faster and it'll get them a little bit crisper. 
It's been about 20 minutes. I am going to go check the potatoes, and if they're ready to be flipped, we will flip them. So we're looking for them to be sort of a nice blonde gold color here. What we want is for them to be this sort of really nice golden color on all sides. This particular recipe, with all the cheese, you actually don't want them to get too dark because the cheese will get bitter. Ooh, these are really sticking, huh? All right, so this thing happened, which I guess sometimes happens in the life of a recipe developer, which is that one of my recipes isn't working for me. This always happens when I think you're on camera. Typically, you know, parchment is coated with a silicone layer that should make it pretty much non-stick, but in this case, it doesn't seem to be working quite as well. So I don't know what to, what to attest that to, but I'm using a fish spatula to gently sort of prise the potatoes off the bottom here. If this happens at home, it's not gonna ruin your dinner. It just might take you a few extra minutes. So at this point, we're gonna flip them over so that they cook evenly, so we're flipping them. Uh, they're gonna go right back into the oven, uh, and they're gonna finish off in probably another 15 to 20 minutes or so. You know, as with all cooking, you kinda wanna keep your eye on it. Like, you should never rely just on a timer. What we're looking for with these potatoes is this color, so like a really nice golden brown. What we don't want is for them to get much darker than this, especially with these Parmesan-crusted potatoes, because that protein in that Parmesan can actually tend to get a little bit bitter once it starts to overbrown. Um, so this is the level we're looking for. And you can already see sort of how crispy it got. Just a ton of surface area, an extra surface area added to them, um, both from that starchy slurry and from the Parmesan, and that's just gonna add crunch. Just because I had some of that extra rosemary here and I like that fresh rosemary flavor, I'm gonna toss these with over the fresh minced rosemary. Totally optional. Most of it's gonna probably fall to the bottom of the bowl anyway. So I'm gonna taste a little Oh wow, that's crunchy. You know, at my house we do every other day is utensils optional day. So we do one meal with utensils and one meal that you're allowed to eat with your fingers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do with my fingers today. So I like the feeling of sort of crunchy things between my fingers. Mm. Nice and creamy on the inside, really nice and moist, but with a really nice crunchy layer on that outside. It's not a pure Parmesan crust, it's not a pure potato crust, it's this kind of slurry of potato and Parmesan. So it's got really nice crunchiness uh, from the potato starch, but then a lot of really nice flavor from the Parmesan. My extra crispy roast potatoes with Parmesan, uh, the secret is adding a little bit of baking soda to the potatoes as you boil them, as well as adding a, that little flavor packet. Uh, so more flavor, more texture. Overall, I think it's just the best way to roast potatoes uh, that I've seen, but I hope someone comes up with a better way so I can learn. <laughs> For this recipe, or any one of my New York Times recipes, or any one of the other wonderful New York Times recipes, nytcooking.com. 